What we have here is a Breedlove guitar made in Bent, Indiana, I believe. It's an AD25 SR Plus. Beautifully made guitar. Beautifully made guitar. You can see from the edges and everything like that there. And there's the serial number now. From what I read, 03 means it was 2003, uh, I hope. But this is the Atlas series, and it needs a little bit of that stuck down. And it's got, uh, what do you call that stuff? Not a mother of pearl, but anyway, you know what it is. It's a semi-acoustic, and it's in beautiful, it's a beautiful guitar with very, with great, it's made, well, how do I say it? It's made beautifully. And it's got a Fishman amplifier. I wonder if there's a oh, battery in there. I must check to see. And there's not much wrong with it. Except, except, this was a guitar belonging to a teacher of music. He's fairly well known. And he went on holiday, I believe, is what the story is. And when he came back, one of the students had did what students do and so we have a broken neck and it could be a very simple fix because there's no dirt in there and i like simple so i'm going to try to do that and fix it the only other thing i think i have to do is just give the guitar a service now the strings are black as you can see but they're far too heavy I would say they're 12s or 13s for an acoustic. But I will let him off with that because he's been punished already. Because if you look inside there, you'll see it's got a bridge straightener. We'll have a closer look at that inside when we go inside. So he's had the problem already with strings that are too heavy. And somebody's put that bridge height adjuster in. Okay, we're looking inside now. What is that? I can't tell what that is. We'll see on the computer when I look in the computer. It says excellent craftsmanship on this guitar. And I'm looking for the bottom part of the purling first. And then I'll look at the top. So that all looks pretty good. Now let's look at the top. There's that, I wonder if that was put in at the factory, I can't tell, maybe not. It's nicely done, nice job too. Maybe it's part of the factories. I can't see it though, but the story will be told. Let me just press down on it, see if anybody's broken any struts on it. No, nothing that I see. Nothing that I see, nice job of wiring. And let's look at the stuff to get my game a bit more at the top there. Let's see what we got inside. I'm gonna put this inside to see. Yeah. So it doesn't look like there's the screw for it there. It, it looks like it was done at factory, but who knows? Let's read up front to see if they did use that. But other than that, the struts are all looking great and good. Now, these guitars are interesting in price as well, because I've seen prices from 350 to 995 pounds for these guitars. So let's see what we can do with that neck. I'm going to do the simplest possible thing that I can, and that's use my super duper tight bond and some rubber bands okay let's get stuck in right the theory is simple press down there and press up on the head to close the gap after i put the glue in but it's not so easy to maintain so what I'm having to do is I have the, you can't just see it. There's a clamp there holding the guitar body firm to my desk. And I'm going to use two clamps, one there and one there. And if it closes it up, brilliant. 
If it doesn't, then I'll use a lever to press the head up. So now I need to open it up a little bit to put some glue right down inside the neck, which ain't going to be easy either because I don't want to spread it any further than it is. And I don't know whether this crack goes the whole way to the truss rod. So I could be filling glue up here and putting something into the truss rod, although I don't see that as a big problem uh, because the truss rod will not adhere to the uh, tight bond. This is tight bond. This is the glue that, that everybody uses in the guitar industry for guitar repair work and wood and everything. It is the best. Rosa Stringworks uses it. So if Rosa uses it, I'm happy. So as you can see, there's a lot of glue there. And I'm pushing it in further to get it inside. I don't want to push the neck down too far to get it there. So now I put this to the side and I've got about 10 minutes to work. So now I'll use a tissue just to mop up the bad mess that I've made. And we'll be doing more of that in a second because I'm expecting to see quite a bit of squeeze through. So I'm going to put a cloth on the bottom side of the neck and I'm going to put a cloth on the top side of the neck so there's no, no damage done by the clamp. So I don't know what you can see there, but I'll try to let you see what you can. And I just hope that this is enough pressure. These lovely little clamps have enough pressure to bring the head down to where it needs. If not, I'll use a metal clamp right in the middle. But we'll see first of all with this. Luckily, the bottom side of the where the clamp is is flat. So we're talking about a flat surface and that is squeezing, but it's not squeezing it hard enough. So the neck does need to be pushed up. So this is where I'm going to use wedgies like that. Build up a wedgie. Wedgie. I'm not going to put too much pressure. It actually doesn't need too much pressure. It just needs the neck wedged up a little bit. And with the clamp being held down tight, it tight to the... Uh... Let me just try another one. Let me just see. I don't want to, I don't want to force the neck. Right, okay. Now... Yeah, that's perfect. These clamps are holding it. Now I'm going to clean up that squeeze through. And I'll bring the camera over so you let you see it closer. Fortunately, tight bond is very easy to clean up afterwards if you're careful. These little plastic clamps are great but they don't exert that much pressure but i don't have metal ones that will that actually feels very good let me bring you around to see it okay i can't see what you see by the way let me just see you see the that's 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 pretty good that's pretty flat it is going to need some sanding when it's dried but I'm going to have to leave that now for at least 48 hours like this. It's not completely as clean as I'd want it. Yeah, and it's got as much pressure as I want to put on it. And so we'll leave that now until I come back again. Now, chaps and chapesses, this is the break. I don't know whether you can see that in the camera because the camera's on the other side. Now, it looks to be healed, but I haven't put the strings on yet. You'll see that later. But I can feel a little roughness, just maybe even the thickness of the lacquer. What I probably could do is use some very fine sandpaper and sand it down. My worry is maybe a bit of the lacquer might peel off. So I'm going to use a little bit of super glue and try to put it very, very delicately in there because I don't want it sitting up because there's not too much gloss there. So I don't want to go having to sand it all down. So I'm going to have to put a little bit of super glue in there and keep it as flat as I can. 
what I'd ideally like is a really fine super glue, but I only have two types of super glue. This one, let me just see which is going to be the thinner. I think this is going to be the thinner. So what I'm going to do is try to very delicately put it on without creating big lumps on it. So I'll put the glue out there. Oh, no, I won't. Hold on a second. It looks like it's uh, frozen itself. Now I've got that off. Right, okay. So best to do it as quickly as possible because it's thin now. So I'm going to put little drops in there and all I wanted to do is go inside the crack to seal the, the edge of it. And then what I'll do is I'll come along with it with a little bit of sandpaper. Now, you're not going to like what I'm going to do next because it's going to look really messy, but it's going to be the only thing I can think of doing. And that is wiping it all off. And it leaves a little bit of a mark there, but hopefully it's gone down into it. Now I've got to get it on the sides there in the sides there so i'm gonna to have to fiddle the guitar but you've seen the theory you've seen the theory and then when that's dry then i'll use a little bit of sandpaper and then polish it okay i'll do the sides you don't need to see the sides being done do you do you do you do you actually there's very little to see there let me just feel that it's so smooth in the side i don't think i'll do that side yeah i have to do a little bit of that side because i can feel the just the height of the lacquer so I'll come back to you when I'm ready to sand that. Now there's a plane going over my head, so it's rumbling away. So we're about 10 minutes down the road, and that should be warm, dry now. I'm using 800 very gently because I want to just try to take off the super glue and not go too far past the lacquer because the lacquer will then split. So I'm using wet and dry 800. And I can feel it more than I can see it. And I'm hoping that the, lac the super glue was thin enough to penetrate beneath the lacquer. Well, that feels smooth, but I'll just go a little bit further. And that feels pretty good. Right, I got cut off from my prime there. I was still sounding. Text message came in. Cuts off the iPhone from recording. Buggers. <laughs> a second te text message came in there. So that feels smooth enough. Now I'm going to do the side. Maybe just a touch of cleaning there because it, oh, that seems to be just all you need. It's just a bit of a clean. Right, that feels good down at the side there. I think it might have been a bit of wood glue just coming out there just felt a little bit rough because it's coming off very easily right so okay that look, feels good now stay back up there Go on, get back up there now i'll just do this side till i feel it smooth Feel it with my fingers.
All right, I don't think there's any more I can do to that. So I'm going to use some 200 just to take the scratches of the 800 away. And then I'll use some polish just to bring that back up again, I hope. This is not my forte. This is the forte of others, but I do what I can. You can see it looks pretty good and it feels very smooth. But what I think, let me just feel there. What, I, what do I feel there? You could be too fussy. Right, okay. Now I put some polish on that. The polish is important because if there's any little holes or cracks there, the polish will go in there and turn it white. But there's not much I can do about that because it needs to be polished to bring it back up again. A bit of water, a bit of polish. Yeah, see a little bit of white coming up there. Don't want to go past that because this bit here is not highly polished. It's natural wood. That's not bad, that's not bad. That's not bad. You see it's pretty well highly polished there. I think it just needs there up near the edge where I'm I'm daring to go. So let's just get it polished up there. Close to that line. Yeah, that's okay. And I'll just do a little bit of polish at the sides where I took away the wood glue and a little bit of polish there at the sides. And I think we're going to be flying there. Yeah, I think we're going to be flying. I have the guitar at an awkward angle to try to keep it sort of at the right level. But I think that's, it feels good. Now have a good look there. Maybe I, maybe I, it feels smooth as anything. So let's just hope that, uh, that. Well, I'm pretty confident the glue will hold it, but let's not get overconfident. Let's just make sure. Okay, later's. Now I want to see what that is up around the neck that I glanced on in the computer. Just up in there. What am I looking at there? What is that? Is that a piece of wood shoved up to bring the neck back up again? I'm going to do a bit of feeling there and see. Yes, it is indeed. I felt it there and somebody's jammed a wedge of wood and maybe a nail. Maybe that's a nail. I just can't tell. But that wedge of wood pushed the neck upwards by wedging there, so it made it that way. Which is consider concerning too, but why is there a gap there? Because that gap would cause the thing to go down anyway. Anyway, okay, so they brought the neck up and they put a, a bridge doctor, which to me does the opposite, because it brings this up. And you don't want that brought up. If you bring the neck up, you want that down. Anyway, they did it, and it's working. Now we're going to look at this neck. The frets are nice, nice frets. Thin frets, narrow frets. And I'm going to check the fret leveling. Then I'm going to go fast. I'm going to speed this up. Needs a bit there. Ooh, it needs a bit there. Should have checked the neck straightness first, shouldn't I? Oh. Let me just see. It's 
got an overbow. It's rocking back and forth. So it's got an overbow, quite a chunk of an overbow. So I'm going to loosen off the truss rod and see what we can do there. What size are you, truss rod? It's, it's strange that they would put that wedge there. Oh yeah, 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 that's tightening it. That's why it's not. Right, my mistake. Oh, that's it now. Right, okay. Yeah, I'm working, I'm working it backwards. Alright, okay, that's loosening it. I'm thinking the way the head's gone. Right. Now we're back to where we were, and that's loosened it. Yeah, now we're getting somewhere. I think it just needs another little tiny loosen. Perfectly straight. Just testing it. Give it a tiniest touch more if it'll loosen anymore. Where are you? Come on, get in there. No, don't get in there like that. Right, okay. Right, you're gonna have to take my word for it. That is a perfectly straight neck. Okay, so where does that bring us here? Not much difference at all. I like, I like that. Bring you out a bit. I like that to be just. Well, come on, out a bit, out a bit. I like that there, which is hitting the. But I like it to be just above it. But it's perfectly fine. Like that. And now we're going to look at the the, the fret leveling. I'm going to keep that little thing out just in case when you put the strings on you get it back again. Now look at the fret leveling. So what I'll do now is I'm going to actually do a little bit of crowning of the frets. Hello Georgie girl. How you doing? Georgie girl's there. Do the crowning first with the fine frets, and then Georgia girl sniffing me. Sniff it, Georgia girl is biting me now. Georgia girl, why are you biting me? Why are you biting me? Do you want up? Come on. Yes, she wants up. She wants a cuddle. That's why I got bitten. Oh, my fly is open. <laughs> so that's why I got bitten. She so got to give me a little nip to say you're not paying attention to me. And there's her little tail in my arms. So I reach across and polish. So she's had her cuddles and she's happy. This is about an hour later. She didn't get cuddles all that time. She just uh, dragged me away and I ate my dinner. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to speed this up. I'm just going to tidy up the frets a bit. It's a bit of wear and tear, but I'm not going to go crazy on it. I think it's fine the way it is. So I'm just going to speed this up. Now I did say I would put a touch of glue on that and that's what I intend to do now. <laughs> Just put a touch of glue on it. And... Hopefully. 
hopefully it will be nice and easy to do. But you know these things here, they can, they can take more time than what you imagine. These little jobs. Right, now do I glue my finger to this or do I have success because I don't want to end up with my finger permanently holding that down looks okay looks like it's holding yeah it looks like it's holding give it another few seconds and then I'll polish off the high build guitar finishing oil polish it off there and polish it off the bridge and I think that's all I'm going to hold it for. But now's the time to get the strings on to see what we do because this is the dangerous time. It's been nearly a week since that's been glued. But I'm fairly confident that it will stay together because if it was two flat things gluing together it can still be pretty good but in this instance it was ripped apart so you've got three or four times a normal neck surface because it's the grooves are fitting in each other and you've got extra surface there and extra surface there and every little groove. So I'm even more confident and perhaps I shouldn't say that because I'll tighten it up on camera and you'll probably all laugh when it goes <coughs> I won't but you might all right am I mad or what this is the bit to watch for here to see if this opens up in any form or fashion so I've got the strings in the guitar but not on the guitar yet so I'm going to put them on and as we tension it up that's when we start to look for little cracks in the fabric of the universe so keep your fingers crossed as I tighten these up love those tuners love those tuners bring that I could bring that action down a bit but uh, it depends on what the owners could wanting it for just keep your eye on there and to see if it opens up in any form or fashion maybe too much going on there Be looking at this video myself when I finish to see if there was any movement at all. I'm, 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 I'm hoping there's not going to be anything, any movement. I'm pretty sure there won't be, but you just can never tell. Okay, these are acoustic guitar strings. They're tens. Now how am I going to get around there without knocking the camera off? Right, let me move the camera there. So... Don't usually put that many turns on, but I'm working cat-handed as they say. I'm working back the front here because you've got a camera on the guitar. And I'm biased. I am. If it did open up, the cure is going to be very painful because then you've got to start cutting the neck off and putting grooves in it and all that sort of thing and I don't think I oh what happened to you? Have you are you sick or something? It, it I think it got tired watching. Come on, back up again. 
what happened? Did you get tired of watching? Let me just tighten that up again. Right, okay. So the cure will be quite hard if this doesn't fix it. And if anything does go wrong with it, which I'm hoping it won't, it's going to have to go into my store until I get time to, to do something more major with it. But let's just see where we are. You've got to go around there now. A bit more. Lights blinding me. What do I do for videos, eh? Lights blinding me, shining up in my eyes, just so that you can see. Bloody hell. Sacrifice I'm making. You know that I, I'm almost, I've almost made 60 pounds on these videos. Isn't that great? That will buy me little things that I need for the guitar. Well, I've already spent the money on the bloody things. So it'll come out of my pocket. I'm going to bring it up to tune. And you just keep watching that, because this is the tension part. Right, okay, I think that should be you. Right. I love those rubber tuners. Let me have a look at that to see if it's moved any. Nope, not an inch, I'm delighted to say. Nothing. A little bit of white there that I need to work on. I saw it in the video, but now I see it even clearer. Let me just adjust the camera. A little bit of white there. Just annoyed me. And I got a feeling my magic marker, if I get the right color, We'll just take that away. Let me just see. That's the powder inside the, the crack that I couldn't get out. Is that it gone? I can't see. Looks to be gone. Okay, next thing you know is a demo. Well, there you go. You can see where it was broken. You can't feel where it was broken. And it's as smooth as a baby's button. What's a baby's button when you're riding home? It's as smooth as a baby's bum. My goodness. Right, I'll play a tune now. Well, there you are. There's the Breedlove guitar. Going back to its daddy very shortly. And it's a bit of dirt there. It's not a showroom. It's a place to fix guitars and it's looking lovely and it's playing lovely and the back as you'll see is where the neck was broken you can still see where it was broken which i like that idea because you're not bluffing anything then and it plays well so this is through the amplifier and this is naked the amplifier now 
pretty good action up there. Could be slightly improved. Action down at the bottom is pretty good too, but it could be better. I could adjust it the whole way down and I could get a better action at the top. But what I probably would suggest to the owner is to bring it back to me in about three to six months and we'll see how the neck has settled in. And then I can bring down the uh, the fret, fret, fret nut and bring down the saddle nut. It's a little bit high. But overall, I like this guitar. Let me just check. It's in tune. So there we go. Cheap perfume. Painted faces. All on angels. Share the places. Anybody doesn't know that, I don't want to know them. That's Randy Travis. Just to let you hear what it sounds like. Anyway, there you go. Going back to Daddy. Uh, it needs this little uh, plug, by the way. The jack socket's a bit loose, so it does crackle. But I can do that when it comes back again in three or four months and get that all nice and pretty. But it's going home, and I don't know what future it's going to. Is it going to be a student's guitar? I hope not. It should be banned from the hands of those grubby little half-baked students. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. What's my chord sound like? Bye-bye, lovely little guitar. Bye-bye, bye-bye.